Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 29th of September 2011. The Sun continues to rattle the Earth's magnetic field with a series of geomagnetic storms. But more on that later. First, our trivia question of the day. The USSR was the first nation to put a satellite into space with Sputnik. The US followed a little later with Explorer 1. Which was the third nation to have a satellite in orbit? What was that satellite's name? And what year was it launched? The answer will be given at the end. In the last 24 hours we've had just two C flares and one M flare and that was the one that I mentioned yesterday. So the sun has quieted down quite a bit. Let's take a look at the active regions and see if we can see why. We now have six officially numbered regions on the disk with the addition of 1307 on the northeast limb. Now I'm going to have a lot of disagreements with Noah today about the, the trends in the sizes of these regions. So I'd like you to make up your mind for yourself. Let's start in the northwest with region 1301. According to NOAA, that region has been growing. When I compare the images taken over the last 24 hours, to me it looks as though it's decayed somewhat. Region 1304 nearby seems to have grown to me, however NOAA claims that it is stable. Next we'll go to region 1302, which is just past this center. This region has produced all the significant flares in the last 24 hours. And it's still a very significant region. I'm not sure whether it's grown or decayed, however it certainly has changed. Pause the video and compare yesterday's picture with today's and see if you can see in how many ways it has changed. The most obvious change to me is that the lead spot has broken into two and is now merging with one of the satellite spots that was in the middle of the region. Also the trailer region is breaking up. Lastly we turn to the three regions near the northeast limb. And here I disagree intensely with the areas that are assigned by NOAA. They claim that the leading region, region 1305, has decayed. But to me it looks as though it's grown quite significantly and even got more spots surrounding it. Region 1306 they claim has increased its area by the factor of 3. But I see hardly any change at all. And if they're counting all the spots near the northeast limb as region 1307, I think the area is much larger than 10 millionths. All in all, the level of solar activity has been fairly low. However, note once again that all the regions are in the Northern Hemisphere. And rather spookily, they seem to be almost evenly spaced across the Northern Hemisphere. I wonder if that's some sort of clue as to what's going on beneath the surface of the Sun in producing these regions. In the Sunspot movie from the HMI instrument, follow the evolution of region 1302 over this 48 hour period. But in the magnetic movie, concentrate on the Southern Hemisphere and see if you can see any sign of small regions developing, even if they are not producing spots. There doesn't seem to be, does there? Unfortunately, Helio Viewer has still got some gremlins, and so we're going to have to make do with the 48 hour quick look movies from the SDO. And I would just follow the uh, evolution of region 1302 throughout. In the high temperature coronal image from the SXI instrument, we can see that we have new regions coming over both the northeast and the southeast limb. But the very interesting thing I'm seeing here is the degree of connection between region 1302 and 1305 near disk center. Apart from all the coronal mass ejections you can see on the uh, SOHO chronograph images, EMEA 98 yesterday asked about the snow on the images. That's actually the protons from the proton event that we're still undergoing. Every time a proton hits one of the focal plane, it saturates the pixels and produces this snowy effect. This isn't particularly bad. I've seen images like this one that have basically been completely snowed out. So that goes to show how mild these particular events are. From the solar wind data you can see that we were hit earlier this morning, at least GMT time, by another small coronal mass ejection. The velocity of the solar wind suddenly jumped, the temperature increased slightly and the density started moving around all over the place but actually reached a value of and seven uh, protons per cubic centimeter at one point. The high energy electron flux seems to be settling down to more usual values, having peaked a couple of days ago and then gone into this uh, high degree of variability. And as you can see we are still in a proton event and it looks as though there was actually a little bit of an impulse from the M flare from yesterday, but there still is a marked downward trend. At both poles the auroral zone seems to be relatively quiet, uh, but we are still getting some spectacular pictures of aurora. Here's, here's an example, again from spaceweather.com. And uh, the KP index reached minor storm values for a while yesterday. 
However, currently we have no uh, warnings from NOAA on geomagnetic storm, radiation storms or radio blackouts. So in summary then, the X-ray background remains at the B4 level, the sunspot number has risen to 115, the radio sun intensity has dropped to 133, solar wind speed has increased to 530 km per second with a density of less than one proton per cubic centimetre and geospace conditions in the last day have reached minor storm levels. My forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares are likely, M flares are possible, X flares are unlikely, the sunspot number will probably ease higher, coronal mass ejections remain likely, solar wind speed will go lower, and the geomagnetic storms are still possible. In the longer term we see that the uh, region in the southeast should be coming over the limb tomorrow, followed by two regions a, a couple of days later, one in the north and one in the south. If you'd like to get more information about the Sun, follow some of the links in the description box below. If you'd like to see some of the earlier editions of the Sun today, or some of my other videos, then go to my channel, they're all listed there. If you want to keep abreast of what's going on in the Sun, please subscribe, you're welcome to do so. And that, so now the answer to our trivia question. The third uh, country to join in the space race was Canada, and the name of its first satellite was Alouette 1, and it was launched in 1962. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.